DA Panty. Panting at DA Panty. Panting at DA Panty. Panting at DA Panty. Siao Tatum Shaba Siao Tata. 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 Amanda. 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 Welcome to Andin Motama Speaks Podcast. Please subscribe uh, so that you get notifications for the coming episodes. So today we're going to discuss why is it that acts of racism really get punished. I believe that it is in understanding the totality of what racism is that help us to explain why individual acts of racism are really punished, or if they punished, they punish so little. And also to understand how racism reproduces itself through anticipation of our reaction. So every time there's an incident of racism, we all get very angry, get exhausted in that individual act of racism, and then we all go home and the system of white power sustain itself until another moment we see a flare up of this act of individual acts of racism and again we get highly charged and we uh, press for justice we go we open some case here but the total structure of society remains as it is and black black people are victims and white people perpetrate racism. It is precisely because we fail to understand that individual acts of racism are sanctioned by institutional racism. We have to understand this institutional racism, which is really like, if you use the Marxist uh, paradigm, is the base and the superstructure you know, a Marxist notion that the base is the economy and then it gives rise to the superstructure, the laws, the belief system and so on, which justify the base. And the base in a capitalist society is one of economic domination by a minority. And that minority becomes the ruling class and its ideas become the ideas that are sustained in society. It controls, the ruling class controls everything that happens, politics, culture, uh, ideas, as we say, and, and culture, including. Same, if we think about racism in terms of that base and superstructure, we have to understand the power of whiteness emanates from the institutional basis, which is the power concentrated in the economy, concentrated in the belief system, concentrated in symbolism as well. As we have said in the past episode, the, what sustained white supremacy is this symbolic power and it protects that symbolic power such that, as we know, you know, when Napoleon was defeated by the Haiti, his biggest concern was the symbolic implication of that defeat. Because he said, if we don't stop black people, and he said it very clearly that it was any, not an economic question, it was a, a question of the elaboration of white power. And he said, we must stop, if we don't stop black people in Haiti at the time, then this malaise of black uh, revolutionary uprising and attacking of the white body and white symbolism would go across the world. He said it very clearly that it must be stopped. So we don't seem to appreciate enough, I believe, in South Africa, how white power is concentrated in the economic reality that we live in. And that then creates the ruling class as the white people who then controls everything, including parliament. That parliament, as we know, it can't make any laws that goes against the interests of white people. It is controlled by Stellenbosch. 
Stellenbosch doesn't need to be in parliament uh, physically. It sends its agents. They create the false uh, situation of fighting amongst each other, but in reality they are reproducing the same system. So if we look at some of the key moments which agitated us, Penny Sparrow, for instance, you called our people uh, monkeys in Durban, were all very angry at the time, and she got a slap on the wrist, and she uh, went away. Now we are all up in arms because of this white woman who has said that um, we are worst, uh, we are rapists, we must be killed, and our women's wombs must be ripped out because they give birth to black men who are worse than the pit bulls. And we are very angry against this white woman. And some political parties have even opened um, some cases. Now, you will see even that case, it is not going to go anywhere. And then we'll have another situation of a flare up. There was this Adam Katavelos who went to the Greek island and there he called us by the K word making a video about how there are no black people, there are no kafers there on the, on the island. It was peaceful and so on. And we also know that um, he, was, he got a slap. Vicky Mombek, who called the policeman with the K word f over 49 times, she was out of jail within no time. Um, and we see why students are continuing with their uh, urination pro project against blacks. Because we are toilets uh, to them. And you will see our rage will come out. We'll all talk about it for a week. We'll forget and go back to our rhythms of our lives and white racism um, continues because we did not go to the institutional basis of white racism. To understand why the law does not punish white people, we have to understand the whole project of human rights. For instance, where it comes from and how it is based on the exclusion of black people. Go to the United States of America's constitution where it talks about everyone has freedom. But at a time, the authors of that document were slaveholders. So there was no conception of our inclusion as black people in the notion of rights. When the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was promulgated by United Nations. South Africa had itself was represented in the UN as an apartheid uh, uh, racist country. The colonialist countries which colonized Africa, which has kept us under oppression, had a universal declaration of human rights. So we are not part of those rights. And that is why you see that in the United States of America, the extension of human rights to black people through the civil rights process did not translate into the protection of black people because the rights themselves are determined by the exclusions of black people. This is why black people today have no rights. They get shot, as we know, uh, at will by the police, they are overrepresented in the uh, uh, prisons, in the in death row. We do not have rights as, as, as black people. Rights are for humans, and humans are white people, and white people use these human rights precisely to exclude us. And that is why it's so difficult in South Africa to have rights that protects black people because we have adopted the same white 
Human Rights Project, which is predicated in the exclusion of black people. So we are unable to claim these rights because these rights are not organized in recognition of us as sentient beings, if you like, or people that carry these rights. I mean, you can see even with the situation of the LGBTI situation where white LGBTI people are protected by the Constitution. The black lesbian in the township finds themselves caught up in the reality of lack of rights of all and as a consequence vulnerable to the violence that consumes all in the township, in the black ghetto. There are no rights, there are no protections there. We live like animals and we have to understand who generated the ghetto and the function of the ghetto in terms of reproducing the, the privileges that the white society enjoys. Without understanding that, we're going to continue to have these meaningless, occasional, even controlled processes of reacting to um, individual acts of racism. Uh, Professor Fuller, Nelly Fuller, has told us already that white supremacy produces itself through, amongst others, self-sacrifice. So a few white people are sacrificed um, to maintain the totality of white power. So these will be your hobos, you know, which are very visible. Um, and when we see the hobos that communicate the idea that white people also suffer poverty. So we must not in a sense, be so upset about poverty, when in fact those are less than 5% of the white population. And more generally, there are people who have messed up their lives so that they find themselves in those conditions. But these white poor are so overrepresented in the imagination of society to hide the fact that in fact the people who are poor and excluded are black, are black people. So the white system reproduces itself through normalizing these processes. And I want to argue that the white processes in South Africa almost anticipate that black people will react in these ways when there are these individual acts of racism. And therefore, we are failing to look at the machine that produces this racism, which is the institutionalized power which white people enjoys in South Africa. And that comes from their ownership, the economy, their ownership of knowledge production, their overrepresentation in symbolism, their overrepresentation in the um, management structures of society, and generally basically controlling the South African society. So we are not going to get justice as black people until the powers of whiteness is broken down and its institutional basis is destroyed. And only then can black people get justice when we suffer acts of racism. Right now, acts of racism are, as we say, sanctioned by the white reality that we live under. We will not break down. The racism is not the misunderstanding between friends. Racism is not what just white, white people are, uh, are taught at home. Racism is the reality that we all live and the white child can see the difference in life chances between white and black. They can see at home, we are the servants. At school, the garden boy, the, the kitchen people cleaning after them are black people and then they are they all go back to the township. The towns still remain by and large white. And why should a white child get the notion that they must respect black people? When we sing the national anthem, 
It is the national anthem of apartheid and a little bit of Nkosi Sikilea. Again, there, there's no clear break with the past, clear break with white power. And that is why we see racism in our schools and in our universities. Because the, black, the white child is not being taught about the crimes of whiteness, about the crimes that have put them in a position of privilege which they enjoy today. There is a systematic ignorance which is perpetuated by this system of democracy we live under because we are all equal before the law. So we must pretend to be equal and we must forget about history that has brought us where we are, where in reality we live two different types of lives. But yeah, that's what we must do. Go back to understanding the institutional basis of racism that sanctions individual acts of racism. And of course, as we've said in the past, when these individual acts of racism happen, we must intervene. And sometimes when you intervene directly, we get some kind of satisfaction um, through that process of interaction. But it does not end the institutionalized power of whiteness that constantly creates uh, this reality. In fact, in conclusion, I think I want to quote um, what uh, Tony Morrison have said about, about, about racism. She says, and I quote, the very serious function of racism is destruction. It keeps you from doing your work. It keeps you explaining over and over your reasons for being. Somebody says you have no language and so you spend 20 years proving that you do. Somebody says your head is shaped improperly. So you have scientists working on the fact that it is. Somebody says that you have no art. So you dredge that up. Somebody says that you have no kingdoms. And so you dredge that up. None of that is necessary. It is a, um, bottomless pit in attempting to explain ourselves that we are human too. We have made so many, many big mistakes in attempting to explain to the white side that we are human too. I mean, I claim, for instance, that bringing the World Cup in South Africa was part of trying to say to white people, we are competent, we can do this, we are like you, do not look down upon us. And it did not help. All it did was to create these highways which um, were forced some of us to pay toll gates for. And then there was uh, these empty stadiums which were created for Sepp Blatter. And they took the money and they left. We did not get the dignity that we expected. And we shall not get the dignity that we expected until we defeat whiteness by focusing on its institutional basis, which rests primarily on the economy, on land ownership in South Africa. You can't get around that until you are real owners of land. In Zimbabwe, for instance, this is another interesting example. It is said that those white people who stayed after land was uh, redistributed changed their attitude to white black people. They started respecting black people because they were now on equal footing. We have to give white people reason to respect us. Why should white people in South Africa respect black people? Give me one reason. Why? If I was white, I would not respect you. Why would I respect a people that have lost their land to my ancestors and I still have the land, they don't have it, I have the economy, I live well, they are my servants. What is the motivation for white people to respect us? They have zero motivation, zero reason for respecting black people. We have to assume our majority power, take it seriously, 
address the historical imbalances and that will bring about respect to black people. Right now, even if we drive here in the East End, white people shout out of the windows of their car, Kafa! That's what they do here. I mean, uh, because they, they are protected and this system is theirs and the country belongs to them. We are just tenants here. And that is why Bafana Bafana plays the way it plays. As I say, it is a bunch of mercenaries, a group with no country, territory, or land to f fight for, to play for. And therefore, there's no pride at all in what they are doing. And that is true for most of us black people. Our psyche will remain backward, will remain as if there's something wrong with us. Precisely because we're a landless majority. Let's get back the land and everything else will be added upon us. Is it? Happy Christmas. <laughs> Happy Christmas. <laughs> Panting at DA Panty! Panting at DA Panty! Panting at DA Panty! Panting at DA Panty! Siao Tatum Shaba Siao Tata! 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 Amanda! Amanda! Amanda!